16 weeks now in the book of Revelation, and uh, I hope that you're starting to see, instead of a fear of this book, a love for this book, uh, and a, a, at least a little clearer understanding of this book. Um, like I've told you many times, I feared this book for 50, oh, about 54 years of my life, and in the last three years I have learned to, to read this book often, um, to just see what God is trying to pour out to me. And uh, I hope you have found the same thing. So, chapter 17 kind of starts like this. Um, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke to me saying, Come here, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on the many waters. Let's stop right there. What are some key things you see here? Because you're going to see one word I've got to highlight it, I think, about six times in this chapter alone. You're going to see... Oh, don't. Yes, I'm still learning how to use a saying, and I've had it for five years. Sorry. Um, it's a fire thing. Yes. Yeah, uh, um, so we, we know we're coming off the seven bowls, the last set of the sevens. Come here and I will show you. And now we're going to see that John says often, I saw. So these are things that John is witnessing that are things that will take place as far as seven bulls. And the big thing that I want you to see here is, is as we go through 17, 18, 19, it's the downfall of all evil. So we've, we've witnessed the things that, are, that I feel we're going through right now. The world's coming to an end. No, I'm not saying what day, month, year, or week it is going to happen. I just know that every day and every minute I live, I am one step closer to being home with Jesus. Amen. And so that's what I see going on. And But we see that there is a final time that the beast, what were the, what's the unholy trinity? Remember them? Beast. You had the beast. False prophet. Well, we, we haven't really got into the false prophet yet. Remember, we and then we've got what? Of the land and the sea. Serpent. Well, the beast is Satan. All right, everybody turn back in your Bibles to 13. Oh, you're, you've got to work for this now. I ain't giving you this stuff. You're supposed to have this. <laughs> So we have the beast, the dragon. we have the dragon, and then the beast from the land and the sea. The beast from the sea is what we see as the Jesus. The beast from the land is the, the Holy Ghost, and that makes up our unholy trinity, right? So the red dragon in 12, and then the beast of the sea and the land. So we see this, that the beast here is not defining which beast, but the beast is coming up, and we're going to see the downfall of the harlot first. Okay? Um, so the harlot who sits on many waters, what does waters mean? Remember when we're booking, reading the book of Revelation, it means chaos. chaos. Uh, again, an imagery from the fishermen that would, when they, you know, they go out on, on uh, the Lake Jordan or something, and it could instantly... Go and, and we saw that with Jesus, right? How many times were the disciples going across and a big wind came up and a storm came up and they were crying out and they were afraid? So when we see when we see waters, that's a kind of a culmination of what they would have understood as the the um, the chaos of many things. And we're going to see that again farther in this chapter. But with whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality and those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. And he carried me away into the spirit, into a wilderness. Now some uh, translations actually say into a desert place, um, but just a barren place that John would be witnessing this. And he saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. Scarlet, what color is that? Red. 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 Full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was clothed in purple. What's that? Royalty. Royalty. So now we see the colors of royalty, yet back in those days, the color red was a color associated with? Ladies. Ladies of the night. 
prostitutes, harlots. Some of your Bibles may say prostitute instead of a harlot. Okay? Adorned with gold, precious stones, and pearls, having in her hand a gold cup filled with the abominations and the unclean, unclean things of her immorality. So I want you to picture this. We have this vision of this woman who has the ability to change people's minds. Okay? And what I mean by that is, is the immorality doesn't necessarily have to be of sexual nature, but it is a, of a nature that she can make them sin. Okay? That she, can, she has the power over men. Um, let's be honest, women. You got power over us. You know you do. We make you mad, we ain't eat. <laughs> right? Either that or we're scared to eat. Either that or we're scared of what, what's that crunch in the soup, honey? <laughs> now then just keep eating. Why does this taste like antifreeze? Not that I've ever had it. This is weird looking Mountain Dew. No. But, but this woman has the ability to capture the kings of the world and bring them into her immorality. In other words, do what? I'm sorry? Persuade, Persuade them away from God. That is her immorality. She is writing in on the beast. So she's buddies with Satan. Alright? So understand what we're looking at here is this, this imagery of one who has power over mankind to pull them away. We, we see this in the Old Testament often. That, um, that they would be told to go in or they would come out of captivity and they were told to do what? Certain things at certain times, the road to Jericho. They were told to wipe everybody out and take nothing. But yet, when they went into I, AI, not artificial intelligence, <laughs> they were told to not take anything. And yet, what did they do? They took that one robe and they took some other things and then they began to lose battles because they did not follow God's commands. Okay? Again, putting all of the book of Revelation together up to this point. When we don't follow the commands of God, bad things happen. Because when we're not following God, we're following the harlot. Okay? So she has this power to sway over us our ability to follow Him. Okay? <clears throat> All right. And on her forehead, a name was written, a mystery. Battle on the great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. All right. Let's break that down a little bit. Where is Babylon? Iraq. <laughs> well, that's where it was. Yes. <laughs> Let's think about who started Babylon. The Babylonians. <laughs> A <laughs> the Babylonians. <laughs> Who was it? Come, we're going all the way back to Genesis 10 here. They built the towers. Cain's? Nope. No. no, they built the tower of Babel. Of that Babel. Yep. The word in, er in Hebrew, <coughs> Babylon, is the same as Babel. Okay? Who was it? I love it. Nimrod. Remember him? So he would have been Noah's great grandson. It was Noah, then Ham, then Cush. Sounds yes. like a breakfast, yes. doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Noah, Ham, Cush, and Nimrod. And Nimrod, if we read in Genesis 10, it talks about how he was a mighty warrior. Now, some translations that I read don't have it necessarily as a mighty warrior, but as a tyrant, because it was a, he was a very big and strong man. Some commentaries I've read that have likened him to a Nephilim. Remember hearing that name in the Bible? Half God or half angel, half human. He was a big, mighty man, and he did a lot of mighty things. But Babylon, because why? You know, everybody thinks that the Torah of Babel was written why? Or that, that it was sorted out why? 
What's the real reason that Babylon was a no good thing for God? They tried to reach out. They, why? Because they want to be like him. Josephus in the book Antiquity said that Nimrod, and this is Jewish history here, it's not necessarily biblical, but it's what the Jews believed, that Nimrod was building it so that way if God ever tried to do a flood again, they would beat God in his game. And so Nimrod, Babylon, has always been associated with those rebellious against God. So that's why we see we, we see in, in Isaiah, we see, I think it's Ezekiel, there's a couple time, different times that even Jerusalem or the Jews get likened to Babylon. When you see Babylon in the Bible, it is a city that is rebellious to God. So take, taking this into consideration, Babylon the Great and the mother of the harlots, the understanding here is John is writing during what period, time period? About 95 A.D. Who's the ruler? Commission. Commission. And he's a what? Caesar. And starting back in Nero's day, back in 70, Nero was the first one that defined himself to be God. God. So John is, if we, we understand this, John is actually writing to his time period. You know, we always want to fit... The Bible into our time period, it was written for a reason then. The people that would have been reading this would understand to be Babylon the Great is Rome, and the mother of the harlots is the Roman Empire. Because think about what they're doing. They have, remember, we talked about this a couple weeks ago the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, the treaty that Rome was going to be peaceful as they're going in and plundering and taking over nations. Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots, and the abominations of the earth. They were killing Christians. Put this into perspective with history. Yeah. Okay? We, we too often, I have found, and even I did this all the time, I tried to make Revelation talk to me right now, and it does, but in our time period, what would be another Babylon? Or in the last hundred years, let's say? Stalin. Hitler. Yeah. We've got, well, we've got a lot of nations right now and in the past that have rose to power and decided to kill people to be peaceful, right? We'll become big and we'll have one giant nation and then we'll be peaceful. But in their abomination, they have killed in the name of themselves, not in the name of God. Or not in the name of anything worthy, because what would be the use of killing people that's worthy? Right? So understand that this, if we were to start understanding, especially seven, to, yeah, yes sir? I'm not, not trying to uh, pick on any groups, but was the Roman Catholic Church uh, in, in alive during the time of John's writing this? Not as we know it. It wasn't really, it didn't define as a, a, a religion, if you will, till about the time that the Nicene Creed came out, and then that's when it was more defined. They've always felt that Peter being the start, the rock of the church, that he was the first pope, which I don't understand if he's the first pope and he was married and we believe he may have kids. Why can't they be? Anyways. Yeah, um, I totally agree. But um, as far as a, a, a defined religion... We don't see that until, um, oh golly, in about 310, there was a new, the first time a ruler in Rome came to be a Christian, and I can't think of his name. Oh. But that's when they did the Nicene Creed. Um, a later 300s, early 400s is where they began to build our canon of, of the Bible. And all of those people back then were considered priests. But I don't know, now, if you were to ask a, a Catholic person or a priest, they may say, oh no, the Catholic Church started on the day that Christ ascended and Peter gave the first sermon. I, I don't know that much about that beginning of the Catholic Church. So I'll just be honest and say I shouldn't talk because I don't know, but I don't know how to not talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I think that's, 
I have a lot of family that's <coughs> Catholic, and I think that's their view kind on Kind of their take on it. I was going to ask a question when you're talking about, um, you know, Stalin and Hitler. And I guess it's up to interpretation, but would it not be the Muslim religion and the jihad that goes on currently and how they feel about killing people? Would that not fit into this bill? Well, I think so. I guess the, the thing that I'm trying to get you to, to, to realize is that John is pointing out what is going on in his time. <laughs> A lot of times we look at this and we go, oh my goodness, there's so much here. This chapter, especially, there's not that much here. In fact, he's going to go on to say, hang on, I'll tell you the mystery. I'll, I'm going to explain it to you. Remember the Shane videos that we watched? R just read the chapter or read within verses. A lot of times they'll describe or he'll explain to you, and he does. The angel will understand, help John understand this. But I believe the thing that we need to look at is John was writing to his people. And at that time, Christians are being killed for blowing their nose. They're being killed because they said Jesus in public. They're being killed and and again we take that into consideration with the Pax Romana, you know, we're Roman peace. Well, they weren't. But they had drank the Kool-Aid, let's say, of the harlot. And that's what John is saying. Is they drank the Kool-Aid of the harlot and they're doing this all to say, oh, we're doing this in peace and we're going to take care of people as they're going out and slaughtering and killing. And then that's just other nations because they want, he wanted to rule the world. That's what the Caesars wanted to do. And you figure at about this time is where between well, about 65 and about 100 is where Rome was at its biggest. Babylon... We go back in church history now, back to the Genesis time. At that time, Genesis was one of the biggest uh, nations, and Nimrod started it. In fact, if you go on, uh, if you go and do a study on this, um, in Genesis 10, it says, Cush was the father of Nimrod, who began, who began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. So it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord, his kingdom began in Babylon, Erech, Akkad, uh, uh, Kalmet, in the land of Shinar. Now, Shinar is also important, too, because Shinar itself um, has a, a, a whole idea to it that it is, uh, Shinar is located, of course, in Babel. It's the area around there. It was ruled by the king that fought Abraham. It was associated with temptation. It was associated with Babylon's wickedness. Shinar is located in where Judah was exiled for the 70 years. So that whole region had this persona. So God just, uh, the rest of the Bible is built on when you see Babylon, because Babylon died in about 539 B.C. So if we believe they started around the 1600 B.C. mark, massive empire built by Nimrod, part of Assyria was in Babylon, that was associated with Babylon. So it was this mighty, mighty nation. And we are told that the Babylon, that Babylon would fall. That's part of uh, our church history, Isaiah. Babylon will fall. Babylon did fall. In fact, the best that I could find is there was still a small amount of Babylonians living there up until around 300 BC. But it was no longer Babylon as a nation. It was just a little bitty town. And it never rose to power again. Who else was in that area? Come on, you veggie tailors. King, Shadrach, Meshach, and to bed we go. Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebi, right? That was his area. And after he tried to kill Daniel, he tried to kill the three. Power went. And Babylon began to get taken over because they thought they were too big and they could take anybody over. And they began, and then Persia actually beat them in about 539, and then they fell apart. People remained there, but it was no longer the great Babylon. But Babylon has always been considered, biblically speaking, of those people against God. Because Nimrod rose against God. Here's a fun fact. 
Where did the, the, the joke of calling somebody a Nimrod start? I found this in my studies today, too. 300 BC. Bugs Bunny. Uh -huh. he, he used to call Elmer Fudd a Nimrod, and it caught on as now it's a funny term. I didn't know that. I, as I'm researching today, I thought that was too funny. I'm like, and I remember that when I was in school, you Nimrod. Yes, ma'am. Native America, but India, her legal name is Nimarada. Nimarada. <laughs> that sounds like a song. Desperate Nimarada. got an extra A in there, but. Well, that's. That's just, the, the female oh, version. Walking away here. Walking away. Not going to say what I'm thinking any more than I already have. <laughs> um, uh, you can also see things about Nimrod in Micah 5 6. And uh, Syria is referred to as the land of Nimrod in First Chronicles. Um, so anyways, a little history on Babylon so you understand what it relates to and why it is used for all, for all like bad kingdoms, if you will. Okay. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. Huh. Let's go kill some Christians and light them up to, to light my garden at night. And the angel said to me, why do you wonder? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. So, since you all read ahead, what does the seven, seven and ten mean? Uh -huh. seven, seven tribes. Kings. Did, seven tribes. Seven kings. Seven kings. All right, let's just go through it. Why? The beast that you saw was and is not. What in the world English is that? Good thing you wrote it in, in Koine Greek. <coughs> what does that mean? The beast that you saw and is not and is about to come up out of the abyss and go to destruction. Who is not doing his bad things at that time. Okay. But he's, but, but he's also not what? Remember? Go back a couple of chapters. Who's he supposed to be? Dragon. Part of the unholy trinity. And he is not. Because he's going to destruction. God, John, in, in all of Revelation, how many times have we seen all this nasty stuff, but then he throws in, but the saints. But don't worry about it. You're golden. You, you have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. You, you know what I mean? So he's still, as much as he's saying, this is what I'm witnessing, this is the things that are uh, going to happen, he gives us encouragement. How many times do we see John fall down at the foot of an angel? And what does the angel say? You knothead, get up. I'm not the one to worship. Worship God. Right? So here we see, oh, this is going to be horrible. We see this beast and this Chick riding on the beast. What in the world does this mean? But they're going to go to destruction. And those who dwell on the earth, whose names has not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will wonder when they see the beast that he was and is not and will come. Here is the mind which has <coughs> wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sits. And they are the seven kings. Five have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must remain a little while. The beast, which was and is not, is himself also the, an eighth. And is one of the seven. And he goes to destruction. All right, so wait a second. I grew up yeah. white. Wow. I got it. Yeah. John, I don't know. You know, I've watched two videos in the last three days that have uh, tried to discount, and literally in the video, that one plus one equals two. Because now all things, even math, is open to interpretation. So John, he was the starter of this because he just said seven, and now he's saying he's the eighth, but he's one of the seven. Well, then why do we have the eighth? The eighth would be what? The one yet to come. 
The one yet to come or the one that's over all the seven? Okay? So he's kind of the beast that's kind of running the seven. Now think about it. We've got a lot of bad rulers, don't we? John's had a lot of bad rulers up to this point. He's saying there's one yet to come. A lot of people will say, well, that's the one we got to be looking for. Here's the problem. Who's going to be that guy? I don't know about you guys. When Obama got elected, everybody was like, is he the false prophet? How many times has that been said about a president that's been elected in the last hundred years? Oh, he must be the false prophet. Because you didn't like him. It doesn't mean he was a false prophet. It just means you didn't like him, so you tried to put this thing on there. Here's the problem. is when we start getting into, oh, that's the one. That's the false prophet. Oh, that's this. And it says, now you're trying to be the one that is deciding when Christ is coming back. And how about this? We don't. Jesus himself said, I don't know what day the Father's going to send me. So if Jesus himself, who is God, says, I don't know when I'm coming back, we ain't going to know. We're just not. I mean, I can only imagine those people that lived through World War I, World War II, the Korean War, these people that arose to power, began killing people, began wars, that they didn't go, oh, that must be the Antichrist. We're not going to know. At least in my opinion, I will not know what person rises up to power. I mean, right now you ask anybody... Trump is the Antichrist. I've heard that several times. Oh, if he gets elected again, that's going to be the end of the world. He's the Antichrist. How about this, man? God is in control of all things. God says, I put rulers in power for my purpose. We may not like that ruler, but maybe he's trying to teach us a lesson through that ruler, whether good or bad. If God is in control, then how about this? Worship God and not worry about the rest. And we get too caught up in, in the Bible, we get too caught up in Revelation, we get too caught up in our life going, oh my goodness, we've got to, no, 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 you, you are not going to do, I'm not going to do anything. God is in control. And thank God for that, because I see the things I've done. Um, all right. There the seven kings find that have fallen. One is, maybe he was talking about the mission. One is the present ruler of this time. There'll be one more to come after that. We know that Rome falls as a nation pretty quickly after this time. The beast which was and is not is himself also an eighth and is one of the seven. And he goes to destruction. In other words, if you're not worshiping God, where are you headed? <coughs> destruction. Regardless of your amount of power on this earth... And regardless of how cool you think you are, you are not stronger than God. And he's going to pretty much say that. The ten horns which you saw are the ten kings who have not yet received the kingdom. But they receive authority as kings with the, with the beast for one hour. And you may go, well, why one hour? Again, a lot of the time periods that we see in Revelation are, I don't know that John went like this. Okay, Siri, set a timer for one hour. All right, go. What's one hour? In the grand scheme of your life, what's one hour? Short time. A short time period. Again, they didn't speak like we speak. They didn't use analogies like we use analogies. His analogy for a short time, somebody that's going to rise to be a ruler for a short time would be uh, one hour. These have one purpose, and they are to give their power and authority to the beast. They are going to rise up, the other way to look at this is what? Remember that when Rome took over an area, if the king would bow down to the Caesar, he would be allowed to stay as the ruler of that area. As long as he did what the ruler said he had to do. We're a Christian nation. They just took us over. Bill, you have one choice. Die or start worshiping the Roman gods. There goes your head. For me, I'm, I'm done. But there's going to be some, maybe somebody, the next person is going to see it and go, I love Ra. Well, no, that was an Egyptian guy. I love uh, Venus. Okay, you're going to worship the, the... So they would give up their power in order to promote the power of the one in charge of taking over the nations. Again, if we look at this in, in conjunction to 
John is using what he knows, what he sees. Rome, to him, is Babylon. Again, remember that what? All the apostles thought, when would Christ come back? In their lifetime. So John is thinking, I'm writing this, and before I die, because Jesus said what? You will not die like the rest. All the other apostles did what? They were, they were martyred. They were crucified or beheaded or stabbed or whatever. John was the only one that would go on to live a natural life and die a natural death. So John, in my opinion, still has this impression like, okay, I'm the last one left. Last man standing. I get the trophy. Woo! All right, Jesus. Come on. So when he sees us again, if we take into consideration that all the things we've seen so far is imagery for the things that John is witnessing in real life and he sees this happening, it's the last days. And it's still going on today because we know obviously Jesus has not come back yet. And again, my opinion. <clears throat> um, these have one purpose. The only purpose of these kings is to give power and their authority to the beast. Yes, I will bow down and worship you, Caesar, God, near, uh, Nebuch not Nebuchadnezzar, Domitian. I, and I will follow your lead. I will do whatever you want. If you tell me i got to tax my people at 5,000% so that way Rome gets bigger, here we go. So that way I can live, but that way I can remain a king. Because even if it's a little king... In a little bit of area, they still got the title of what? A king. And for a man to have a title of king is big. It was even bigger back in those times. Even if it wasn't a Caesar, it was still a king. All right. These will wage war against the land. So here we see it. All right. Bill, you got your choice, living or dying. Worship me or worship your God. All right. Am I afraid? Did any one of the apostles that went to a cross or went to get beheaded or anything, did they ever bow down to the worldly power? They did not. They stood firm. Those will wage war. Those bad people we just talked about against the Lamb. The Lamb will overcome them because He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And those who are with Him are the called and the chosen and the faithful. I don't know why that gives me tingles. Yeah, right. Because we are the call, we are the chosen, and we need to remain faithful. Worship God, John. Virgin Christian Church, worship God. Don't worry about all the other stuff. We get too caught up in watching the news and going, oh no, there's all this stuff going on. Worship God and remain faithful. If we have been called, which I believe truly every person that's ever been born has been called. God said I came for all, or Jesus said I came for all. I think we've all been called, but have we accepted the chosen part? And have we accepted to be faithful part? Here he's saying, and those who do call chosen faithful, and he said to me, the waters which you saw were the harlot sits, the peoples and the multitudes and the nations and the tongues, and the ten horns which you saw on the beast, and these will hate the harlot. So guess what? Wait a second. Wasn't the harlot, the, the hottie sitting on the back of the beast? Isn't she the one that's changing everybody's mind and getting them all wigged out and going, oh, she's the hottie. I've got to follow her and I've got to give her my allegiance and I've got to. They turn against their own. So even if you are a Satan follower, he turns against you. There's only one in the entire book, in the entire chapter, in the entire Genesis through Revelation that does not turn against his own people, and that is the Lord of Lords and the, and the God of, of or the King of Kings. He is the faithful one, and if we remain faithful to Him, He will protect us. Will bad things happen? Yes. Yeah, they they do. But we look at things too earthly sometimes. Oh, I'm sick. Oh, this person passed away. That's what death brought when the apple or the fruit was eaten. Genesis. Genesis 3. Yeah. Right? But we're going to see in Revelation 21 and 22 where that same tree is now the same place that we will go to eat for the healing of all nations. 
because it's going to give us 12 new fruits every month, and the leaves are for the healing of the nations. When we look at this, we, we, we think of all these bad things that are happening. I don't know, if you do turn on the news, how many get shot in a week in Chicago? 150. And that's just Chicago. We're not adding New York. We're not adding what's going on in Ukraine. We're not adding what's going on in Israel. We're not, go, we're not talking about just got a thing from Voice of the Martyrs. I think it's Nigeria. There's Haiti, a big thing. Haiti. In Haiti. In Haiti, there's massive yeah. persecution of the, the Christians. You can't get out. It's going on, and it's, it's no different than what John is talking about in this book of his time period, and it will not stop until Christ takes us home. We, we can say whatever we want. We can pray as hard as we want. I believe God hears our prayers, but this is part of it. We are in the last days. And, and the bowls that were, or the scrolls that were opened, and the trumpets that were blew, and the bowls that were poured out are all things, in my opinion, that are happening right now. But when it is the time, because we've already had, we've already had Jesus has already, the world's already ended, what, five or six times at this point. But now we're seeing, as, as Paul Harvey would say, the end of the story. Because the harlot will be eaten by her own kind. What does it say? The beast, these will hate her and will make her desolate and naked. What is naked? Exposed. You see, naked in Revelation, it's not a good thing. Don't be naked. We're not supposed to be naked, and, but we're supposed to keep our candles lit, right? Or our oil lamps lit. And we're supposed to be prepared for the time, the coming of Christ, the coming of the Messiah. But she's going to be desolate. She's going to be fully exposed. And then, just to be fun, they're going to eat her flesh and burn her up with fire. Sweet. Because evil hates evil. Evil hates its own and will devour its own. Think about what John is saying. He is witnessing now. He is saying Satan, the evil one, the beast, will eat his own people to destroy them. For God has put it in our hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose. So let's stop for a minute. Let's calm down. John's going, holy crikey, the hottie just got eaten by the beast she's riding on, in on. But why did this happen? And we got to remember this. For God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of, the, of God will be fulfilled. The woman who you saw is the great city, Babylon, Rome, which reigns over the kings of the earth. Domitian was reigning over all the kings. He was requiring them to bow down to him because he had made himself, well, starting back in Euro, he had made himself a god. See, it used to be the Caesars were what? They would be get their godship on their death. Nero changed it and say, I don't want to be considered a god when I'm dead because then I don't get, you know, I can't make people do what I want them to do. He defined himself now as a living god, little g. And all the Caesars after that followed suit. So what, what do we see in chapter 17? It's the fall of Rome. It's the, what they would have considered their Babylon. And again, when John wrote this, he's not thinking that it's going to be 2,000 years before Christ comes back. He's thinking, he's coming back soon. He's coming back. I'm the last one. He's got to be coming back in my time frame. So when, when he's writing this, how many times have I told you that he's referring to Rome? He's using Rome as the example. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that some guy's going to raise up in the middle of uh, the Middle East and start a kingdom and he's going to rise to power. Could it happen that way? I, I guess. I, again, I don't know God's plan. I ain't God. But neither was John. And all of this was revealed to him to say, listen, people, no matter what happens, no matter who rises to power, no matter when they rise to power, no matter how powerful they are, no matter what they say they are, if they say they're a god or an emperor or a whatever, worship big G God. Revelation doesn't have to be hard. It is the final book in the love story of the Bible of a creator trying to woo his creation. And he's saying that these things are happening according to my purpose. 
and I'm, I'm allowing them to happen. I'm letting Satan go. He thinks he's got full reign and he's going to... He already knows he lost. He lost when Jesus arose from the dead. And so his only consequence, or his only consolation to this is what? To take as many God followers with him as he can. But don't be afraid. God is in control. It is his purpose that is going on right now. We can't see it. We don't understand it. At least I don't. I think I would have done things a little differently, personally. But you know what? I live in my little bubble here in Virgin. I don't see the world as a whole. I don't know every single heart, person's heart in the world as a whole. If, if you think Satan's running rampant, he was running rampant back then as they were literally burning people at the stake. As they were whacking people <clears throat> just because they said the name of Jesus. We're not living in a different world. We're just living in a different time. And we have seen Nebuch Nebuchadnezzar's rise and fall. We've seen Nimrod's rise and fall. We've seen Stalin's and Hitler's and all these people rise and fall. God is in control. That's that last verse. Tying the whole chapter together. But God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common person part purpose. And that common person, they'll have their kingdom. They think their kingdom's good. But guess what? They're going to start devouring one another. Do I think we're getting closer every day? Yeah, because even their own people are devouring each other now. I mean, nobody gets along. That's why Christians have to remain tight and solid in our resolve for the word of God. And just let them let them take each other out, if you will. And I hate to say it that way, but yes. let them devour one another. <laughs> but we've got to remember, worship God. The rest will play out. History will always play out under God's pretenses and his purposes. Chapter 17, if you were to ask me what's going to happen, Satan's going to fall, evil's going to fall, they're going to devour each other, and they're going to take themselves to hell. And all I have to do is remember that regardless of what I watch on the news, regardless of what I read in the paper, regardless of what I see, God is in control. And since God is in control, worship God. Amen. Simple, isn't it? I mean, truly, it's really simple. Simple but hard, Bill. I mean, oh. I mean, I, I gotta be honest. You know, you, you think about and, and the interpretation of that too. To me, it's like thinking of all the false prophets in the in the past through this, right? Oh, absolutely. And and the false prophets that are just coming to light today that are claiming to be A, B, and C. I understand. We we've, we've got to follow God because. It's going to be too easy, even for the Christians, to follow somebody else at some point. And it, it's, I don't know, to me, in my, my pea brain, I think, you know, if we're not focused, we're going to be toast. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why how many times have you heard me say in the last six, seven years, don't believe a word I say. I don't want you to ever look at me as, ooh, he's the chosen one. I am not. I am a learner. I am a student. I am studying. I am giving you what I feel to be the truthfulness of everything, but read it for yourself. There are too many false prophets on TV. That's there are too fact, many false man. prophets on, on, in churches Everywhere. today that Everywhere. are selling a bunch of crap, and people are buying into it. I'm not telling you, you, you you tithe, you need to tithe, that's biblical, but I'm not saying if you give 10 bucks, you're getting 20 bucks back. That is not what I'm saying. But it does say there is a blessing in giving to the church. The problem is, is you give me my new helicopter and you will be blessed beyond compare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he had a shooting in his church, so. What's that? Nothing. What? Nothing. <laughs> I'm just thinking about sort of a specific person who just had an active shooter in his church. So, so. Oh. <laughs> we don't want any of that. All right. So, crazy chapter. I know. Um, I hope that I made it a little 
more clear for you, at least my understanding through my prayer and through my studies and, and everything is, you know, Revelation, it, it doesn't have to be scary. And that's why I've, I've learned to love the book of Revelation because it, we have this idea and we see all these weird things and, man, where are we at? The fall of, of, of the evil one. 17, 18, 19 is the fall of all evil and cast into hell and they are done. And then we see in 20 and 21 and 22 the, the, the coming down of heaven and the new heaven and the new earth and we're raised up and given our crown of glory and our new robe. And these are things to, if you're a Christian, we should be excited for these things. Go all the way back to the Christian's or the, the saints that were crying out, when will we, we be avenged? We're reading about the avengement right now. The Avengers have nothing on the true Avenger. Hey. <laughs> well, I did. I just made that up. Okay. <laughs> you, better, you better write it down. You forget. I'll forget it. That's all right. We got it on videotape, and anybody I may get some comments on that one. But Anyways, any questions, comments, concerns? Because I want to leave you with this. 18. And after all these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried out with a mighty voice, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place of demons, and a prisoner of every unclean spirit, and a prisoner of, every, of unclean spirit, and, hate, and hateful bird. I'll leave you with that. Mm. All right, somebody finish this up, please. Dear precious Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity to just, in the middle of our week, just get together and learn about you and pray and just rejoice with each other and share the love and kindness that uh, you want us to show to one another and to show the world, Lord. I thank you for this message and that we can take it with the realization that you are in control and you have, you have it all worked out. We just need to understand that and believe it. And I thank you for having it written for us, Lord, and the fact that we can study it. I pray for everyone that has cannot be here tonight and um, that they will be back with us on Sunday together so we can worship. And we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.